If a warrior cries in the middle of the night and no one is around to hear him, does he make a sound? Who knew that a moment of silence could be so loud? Who knew that the darkness of loneliness could be found in a crowd of people who say they care but to emotionally ill-equipped to handle with care the jagged edges of a warrior with no more missions, only crosses to bear? A warrior who cries out during nightmares, yet silent within the reality thrusted upon him without the proper tools to survive. The feeling is intrusive, like bullets trespassing through unsuspecting skin, like sins of the father visited upon the son, and the footsteps are catching up in the darkness, there is no escape. You see, warriors were never taught to run. We are taught to be oxymorons, walking dead. Sanity becomes a needless necessity when coming home labeled the hero against one's will. If a warrior kills for his country, who becomes accountable for the blood that is spilled? The countless souls that we are commissioned to steal. Who do we hold accountable for tears cried alone in the dark that sparks aggression, imploding? self-loathing, the image leered upon with disdain through a toothpaste-stained mirror. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, except for warriors labeled veterans through the eyes of we the people. So now I ask you, if a warrior loads his gun in the middle of the night and no one is around to hear, does he make a sound? When damaged to the point of no return, do we ignore the fire and let the forest burn under the logic that the fire will eventually burn itself out? Now insert warrior and take the word fire out. See, there is a war going on. The battlefield is a place that we call home. No warrior left behind, but it's beyond me how we have so many casualties and closets full of bone and flesh. When death almost feels like a warm bath in a phone call home. Never left behind, just left alone in the empty abyss of thank you for your service. Left sitting in a waiting room to be put on pills. Trying to convert to living life from kill or be killed, so I ask you. If a warrior shoots his gun in the middle of the night and no one is around to hear, when his body hits the floor, does it finally make a sound that the world will hear? 7,403 vets commit suicide each year. That's one hero every 65 minutes. If you are quiet enough and you close your eyes, you just may hear it. Together, no one suffers alone. Together, no one suffers alone. We can show people it's not just, it's, it's really not just one of us. We are all got to come together in this. Together, nobody suffers alone. Together, no one suffers alone. Together, no one suffers alone. We can show people it's not just, it's, it's really not just one of us. We are all got to come together in this. Together, nobody suffers alone. Together, no one suffers alone. Together, no one suffers alone. We can show people it's not just, it's, it's really not just one of us. We are all got to come together in this. Together, nobody suffers alone. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Our Voice Matters, Exposing the Secrets. I'd like to thank uh, Mind of the Storm for letting us use this platform. Uh, we are very grateful for that um, and for the opportunity to be able to grow this platform uh, for victim survivors and the families that are left behind. Um, we have a great show ahead of us tonight, um, but first I'd like to start with a few uh, warnings and a couple rules that we like to stay with here on the show. Um, one, if you are triggered at any point throughout this show, please, please disconnect immediately in self-care. It is so important that you take care of yourself, 
if you feel that you are triggered. Um, we do not want anybody to be harmed by this in any way, shape, or form. Um, you are feel free to reach out to us through email, um, dvadelaware at gmail.com. Uh, if you would like to uh, debrief or anything, if you are triggered for any part of the show. Um, also, if you are, if any comments or anybody that comes on live is out of line, disrespectful, um, inconsiderate, you will be ejected immediately. There is no questions. Uh, we, we, we concern ourselves with the safety of the victims that we are here, that this platform is built for. So anything that is out of line or considered to be out of line by us, you will be ejected. There is no warning. Um, so with that being said, um, there's uh, tonight we have uh, a great show. Um, Ms. Shakina Rush is going to come on. She is a uh, overcomer of sexual assault, um, domestic violence, uh, I believe intimate partner violence, and she is a founder of She Is You. And with that, I'd like to welcome to the show Ms. Shakina Rush. Hello, hello everyone. Um, thank you so much. Uh, DVA um, and Dawn for having me on um, and you know thank you for that lovely introduction um, and like you said I am an overcomer um, I don't like to use the word survivor or victim um, because I overcame and I overcame sex abuse um, sexual assault and uh, domestic violence uh, so um, that led me to uh, starting an organization um, that provides services to individuals who have, um, you know, um, been um, victims or, you know, who is still experiencing um, those circumstances or issues. And the name of my organization is She Is You. And um, we provide, you know, um, transitional housing rental assistance, mental and um, sex educate mental health uh, sex education um, we also provide um, training to help you know um, individuals to become more esteemed and more um, you know more prepared to be productive citizens uh, so yeah so we offer a host of resources and um, we're based in Philadelphia um, so we are um, almost um reaching our second birthday so we'll be two years old this year yeah. and congratulations yeah, and i'm just so grateful to uh, my board and my host of supporters um especially dva uh we just um recently um hosted a um team date and violence presentation um and we're grateful uh for the connection thank you dawn yeah, uh, so um my experience uh, with teen dating violence started, well, I'm going to say domestic uh, violence, domestic abuse, uh, started at the age of 12 or 13. And that was the time where um, I, I, be, I became sexually active and, um, you know, and I started dating a guy that was a few years older than me. Um, I think I was like 13 and he was maybe um, 16. And, um, you know, I was, I was pretty mature for my age. But to rewind that, um, I was uh, sexually abused um, by my father um, from the, from, from the time I was a toddler up until I was about nine years old. And my mom found my, found our secrets in my diary. And, um, you know, and of course, you know, like many uh, victims or, you know, um, individuals, I don't like to use the word victim, but um, they're not, they're not often believed um, by their, you know, um, family members or, you know, people who are um, responsible for their care. Um, they're often um, told that they're lying and, you know, that they're making stuff up. So, um, you know, my, um, you know, I was not believed. I wasn't believed by my mother, my sister. Um, and it kind of caused like a sense of rejection for me. Um, and it kind of led me to want to find love from other places or want to find acceptance from other places. 
um, because I just kind of felt like it was like this alliance against me. I was just like this uh, rebellious child and, you know, and I, I wanted to destroy, I guess, my parents or, you know, I wanted to cause some type of hurt um, towards my, you know, father or whatever. So it kind of led me to, you know, seek acceptance and love in other places. And um, I, you know, I met, I, I met my, like my first serious boyfriend and um, he, you know, he didn't come from a very healthy um, environment um, as well. So, you know, he witnessed his father abusing his mom, um, you know, physically abusing his mother um, all his life. And I never experienced that, but I, like I said, I experienced sex abuse. And no, I'm not a licensed professional, but I, I am speaking from experience and sex abuse can create a void um, within an individual. And when we have voids, we look for ways to fill those voids, um, whether it's through drugs or um, just, you know, a certain crowd of people like joining a gang or, you know, um, just connecting with something or somebody just to kind of feel like uh, we belong or that we're loved. And, um, you know, we began dating or whatever. And um, I I got pregnant and um, I, I got pregnant. At, I think I was like 14 and I had my daughter when I was 15. And um, before she turned one, I was 16. But I got pregnant at a very, very young age. And um, this person became my best friend. You know, um, we we were each other's support. Um, but, you know, um, because I was so much of a support to him and I was just, you know, looking for that replacement of love and acceptance or whatever, um, you know, he became very controlling, very possessive. Um, I couldn't look in certain directions. And, you know, if I looked in the direction of another guy, you know, he would ask me, like, what am I looking at? Um, you know, if anybody, like, was to talk to me, you know, he would get, you know, very aggressive and upset. Like, you know, why are you talking to her? Why are you talking to him? Um you know, and at the time, like I was still, you know, living under my mother's roof and, you know, I was still attending, um, you know, I was in high school and um, it was sort of like normalized. You know, a lot of my friends, a lot of my peers, they were experiencing the same thing. Um, it was something like accepted within our community, like within our car our culture, you know, if. Um, if a guy was not physically abusing you or, you know, somewhat our young kids might say gripping you up or choking you up, um, he doesn't love you. You know, if he's not showing that type of um, behavior towards you, he does not love you. And, um, you know, and and that wasn't the case. Um, so, you know, sometimes it would the the abuse would kind of escalate and. You know, he would never hit me in areas that other people could see. Um, but, you know, um, he would kind of, you know, hit me um, in my torso area and area and stuff like that. And, you know, I remember um, being at his mother's house and, you know, he was kind of he was hitting me and um, his mom. She called my mom and she was like, you know, um, he's, you know, fighting your daughter and this and that. And, she, and I think my mom said something like, well, she's allowing him to do that. You know, like that's on her. If that's what she's allowing him to do, then, you know, like that's something that she has to deal with. And, you know, she has to take control of. So it control over. So it was kind of like left up to me to be, you know, my own protector um, and like I said, you know, a lot of my friends, they were experiencing the same thing. Um, you know, we thought that it was, it was cute or, you know, it was, um, a, 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 a form of love. You know, a lot of our older, um, 
like a lot of the older people within our community, older girls that we may have looked up to or whatever, they, they've experienced it. So it was like a norm, you know, we didn't, we didn't know anyone that really, um, lost their life behind it or whatever, or no one, um, you know, like close to us. So it didn't, it didn't cause an alarm, you know, it didn't cause for an alarm for us to be fearful uh, for losing our life. Uh, so, um, so he, my, my, you know, boyfriend at the time, my daughter's father, he got, he, he got incarcerated um, and he was incarcerated for, um, a, a couple of years or whatever. And when he was incarcerated, that kind of gave me time to kind of get to know myself. Um, like I grew, I grew as a woman, I grew as a mother. And, um, you know, I just had a different viewpoint and a different perspective on life and about myself. And, um, you know, when he returned home from prison, um, he, he couldn't understand that I, how, how much I've grown and, um, why I wasn't the same person that I was when he left. And, you know, and at the time I was dating someone else and, um, you know, and I, I, I liked this, I liked the person and, um, I had a lot of interest in this person and, um, he couldn't accept the fact that, you know, I had interest in someone else and it was just, you know, no, like, I love you, your mind, you belong to me. And, you know, and just being young, not knowing how to um, create a balance and create healthy boundaries. Um, that person was murdered. Um, he he ended up, you know, mur murdering the person. It was, it turned into like it was it was just yeah. So he murdered the person, and he murdered the person in front of me. And a lot of times. Um, if I showed someone else more attention in time or care more than him, it would, it would, it would become a threat to him. He felt like he felt threatened. He felt that, oh, um, I love this person more than him, or I, I care about this person more than him. And those are signs. Um, those are signs when someone is constantly um, forcing you or, you know, so to speak, to give you all of your, give them all of your time and attention and no one else is worthy of your love and attention but them. Uh, yeah. is, I would like to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. Sure, sure. Um, your story is, um, it's deep. Um, and I just want to thank you for allowing us the opportunity to share it with us. Um, and your honesty and transparency with it. Cause, uh, a lot of people aren't able to do that. And I want to thank you. And I, I'm, you should be proud and you give a lot of people, a lot of hope and a lot of something to believe that they are capable of doing the same thing. Um, thank you. What you've been through is, is something unimaginable, even to myself, um, at points. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, at any time through this, did you ever reach out for assistance? And if so, did you get it? Were you able to receive any assistance prior to the initial incarceration? I, I was never aware of any assistance. Um, the only assistance that I really knew of at the time was support from friends and family. Um, maybe, you know, going to a friend house just to kind of hang out there for a minute, just to kind of like, you know, um, just get some time apart or some time to myself, you know, but I've never heard of any type of um you know, resource to aid me or counsel me and whatever. I didn't even realize that what I was going through was like abuse. Like I didn't even know, you know, because I seen so many other people um, 
around me um, experiencing it. So I just thought it was something that you were supposed to go through. Like that's just what people go through in relationships. You know, I couldn't agree more. Um, it's unfortunate, but it, it's 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 our social norms these days. Um, and I'm not sure it's gotten any better. I'm not sure there's been much movement in any which direction at all, honestly. Um, and sometimes I feel as though it's gotten worse. Um, but yeah, it has. It has gotten worse. Yeah, I feel like we went from a position of in-home to people wanting to help to now it's being hidden because we are being embarrassed, we're being not lit, not heard, you know, all the many things that we've discussed and talked about over the times. Um, you know, the whole, the one thing I picked up on was I also myself going through the child part, um, the, the because of um, what has happened, the anything will do syndrome. Um, and living, that's a sin, and like you said, not knowing these services or not being offered these services at a younger age, like that anything will do syndrome is a, it's a horrible thing. And it lasts through our, if you're not without proper treatment, it will last. How did you become an overcomer? Like, what did you do to become an overcomer? Well, um, so every relationship that I kind of like ended up in afterwards was like, you know, like abusive. It was just unhealthy, you know? Um, and, my last abuse, abusive relationship lasted for about nine years or so. And, um, you know, like I almost, almost lost my life. You know, um, my ex-boyfriend, he decided to pick up a chair and throw it on me. And um, that was, that's when I, you know, um, that's when it hit me. I, you know, some people say I had an epiphany or, <laughs> you know, I, the, you know how some people might say, oh, they knocked sense into you or out of you. The, the mm -hmm. sense got knocked into me at that time. And I, I, I made a decision that, you know, I was just not going to accept it anymore. I began to love myself. Um, I began to just pay attention me though Shakina how does that's what I'm asking I guess I'm interested in how does one really start that journey to self from that you know from being in those horrific situations and being in extreme fear and you know in all the phases that people go through like to be honest I don't even know how to get there yet so like I guess what I'm saying is what type of advice could you offer someone who's coming out of these types of situations to, to, to become an overcomer, to get to self. So the first step I would say is you have, you have to face all of the lies. And when I say you have to face all of the lies, you have to face all of the lies that you're telling yourself first. And then once you face all of the lies that you're telling yourself, then you have to be, you have to, you have to let go of the fear of what other people think about you and how other people feel about you. Because we always put other, well, I'm not going to say we, but some oftentimes people put people before them because they're afraid. They're afraid of something. They're afraid of, I don't know, maybe being alone. They're afraid of maybe being rejected. They're afraid of, you know, um, not being loved or not being wanted, or they're afraid of not getting the attention that they feel like they need from someone. So once you, once you're honest with yourself, then that's when you're able to kind of like see everything that's going on around you because it's not really the lies that other people tell us it's the lies that we tell ourselves mm -hmm. because we we know when you know something is not right or whatever um and you know speaking from um you know someone who over who experienced sex sex abuse now it does affect our self-esteem and it does affect our mental and emotional health um it does put a deterrent 
and it also um you know it 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 suppresses our self-esteem it suppresses it and like i always tell people our self-esteem is our emotional and psychological immune system so when your self-esteem is suppressed it's hard for you to be able to fight against things that we think are the norm or that we think is 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 right or what have you but i'm i have to urge all of those who are out there and that's listening that you have to you have to have the courage to face the lies and it could be lies that your family may have told you lies that you know like your school administrators may have told you lies that the community leaders may have told you lies that your friends may have told you and the lies that you've told yourself you have to face them yes and you have to, you have to start making decisions boundaries are big when it comes to doing that um mm -hmm. well to do that the this exactly what you just said without personal boundaries um, mm -hmm. And personal, you know, I always say to rebuild one's life, you have to rebuild their confidence. And that goes right along with what you're saying with self-esteem. Right. Right. Um, I, I do want to give you a moment, Shakina, before we uh, close out. Shakina has an amazing event coming up soon um, that we will post on, we will post into the uh, chat for everyone. Um, but Shakina, would you like to explain that to everybody? And Yes. Um, so the march is scheduled for April 30th and is a march um, to bring awareness to youth domestic violence um, and just violence against our youth all, all together. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to meet at the Art Museum in uh, Philadelphia and we're going to march through the Ben Franklin Parkway uh, to uh, City Hall uh, where there where there'll be a host of resources and just other organizations to connect with just so we can get the the word out about this issue that is plaguing our youth plaguing our community um plaguing our homes well, so Shana, do you want to tell everybody uh where they can find you how they can reach you um so if anybody wants to get involved or help on on you know in the philly area yep Yep. So you guys can reach me via social media. Um, right now, our website is still being developed, uh, but you can uh, reach me. You can contact us at, on Instagram at she is you Inc. Also on Facebook at she is you Inc. And that's S H E I S the letter U I N C. So please, please connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. I'm putting you back um, on. So um, we'll have all of the information that you need posted, the link, all of this stuff if you want to be a presenter, a performer. Um, so we're just looking to have a really good time and really get the word out and the resources out to our youth. Because like I like I mentioned, I was really not aware that I was I was in, you know, an abusive relationship until until I got out of it. Um, and we need to inform our children our youth yes. um what's normal what's love you yeah. know what's not love yep and, and it always I starts always say, but what it actually is the the realism of what it is and it always starts within the home and within oneself yes definitely agree with that well Shakina, i would love to thank you for being on the show um if thank anybody you for um, everybody, if anybody wants to reach out, um, we will put her information will be in the chat. Um, and Shakina, once again, thank you. Um, Mind of the Storm, thank you. Our Voice Matters is honored to have everybody that has been following us and contributing. And um, just thank you to everyone who has made this possible. Shakina, we appreciate you and everything that you're doing for the community. Thank you, Dawn. I appreciate you as well. Thank you. As always, together, no one suffers alone. No one suffers alone. Thank you, Shkina.